Hey, what's up? You're here because you want to know how to create a new sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm here to teach you how to do it right. Okay, here we are in our project. I've already imported some footage here that we're going to use for our tutorial. And in case you don't already know how to import media, I already made this super fast video about how to do that. And you can find that video in the description below. Also, my channel is very new and there's nowhere to go but up. So if you would like to take the time to punch that thumbs up button for me, that'd be great. Be gone, vile man! That's enough horsing around. Let's create a new sequence. I'm going to do that by clicking on this create new icon down here and clicking on sequence. This is the create new sequence dialog that appears. If you aren't very used to this dialog box, it can seem intimidating at first. So we're just going to go over everything you need to know and you'll find that it's much simpler than it looks. So we have these four tabs up here, sequence presets, settings, tracks, and VR video. Premiere Pro likes to make our lives a little bit easier by setting up everything so that you go from left to right and top to bottom. Starting with this tab, this is the sequence presets tab. Now unless you've already created a sequence preset or you have a sequence preset in mind that you would like to to use we're going to ignore this area one thing we will do however is we're going to give the sequence a name going to go ahead and name it best sequence in the world. So next we'll go to the settings tab. The settings tab will have some default options selected according to what you have selected on sequence presets. If I remember correctly, I had RE 1080p at 23.976 frames per second selected. So what happened is the settings have their defaults set up according to that. Of course, we're not actually using an RE Cinema Cam and these settings aren't what we need. So we're just going to go ahead and click on this drop down menu and select custom all the way in the top. Next in the time base drop down here, this should match the output frame rate that you want to have for this video. So if you want to produce a video that's at 30 frames per second, make this 30. Or if you want 60, make it 60. Next in this section, the video section, this is where you define the size of your video. 1920 by 1080, that's the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio and resolution. If you uploaded this to YouTube, then you would get an HD button at the bottom in the quality settings. Obviously, if you wanted to create 2K or 4K videos, this is where you would have to change that. But in our case, we're just going to create an HD video and that'll be at 1920 by 1080. Your pixel aspect ratio will usually have to be on square pixels unless you have a camera or recording that requires otherwise. And if it does, then you would notice that it would get stretched and squished if you used the square pixels option. However, 99% of the video being taken today is using square pixels because that's the industry standard. In the fields drop down, we're going to leave that on progressive scan. The display format will be fine on 30 FPS timecode and for your working color space, you can just leave this on Rec. 709. Your audio sample rate should be set according to your recording, but usually 48,000 Hz will produce a good sound without any noticeable problems. You can leave display format on audio samples, that's the default, and it's perfectly fine. Your preview file format will have to do with the previews that you see on screen. If you render something, it'll be rendered in an MPEG container. Also, make sure here that your width and height correspond to the frame size horizontal and vertical in your video section. That way you get an accurate preview of your final output. We can leave these two boxes unchecked, maximum bit depth and maximum render quality because these are just previews after all. And if you have a good graphics card, you can composite in linear color, which requires GPU acceleration or max render quality. I have a decent Nvidia card, so I keep this setting on. Next, we'll head over to the Tracks tab, and this just has to do with how many video and audio tracks are in your timeline. In my preferences, I've set up that I want 3 video tracks and 4 audio tracks by default. But if I do end up needing an extra video or audio track down the line, it's okay because you can easily add tracks as you're working. And lastly, we have the VR video tab, which we aren't actually doing a VR video here, but if you are, then you would set this according to what you needed. So I don't know if you were able to tell, but the only real thing that we did is we named our sequence and then we changed a few settings here in the settings tab. Sequence presets we didn't actually use. We didn't change anything in the tracks because we could change those later on anyways. And we didn't use the VR video tab. So really the settings tab is what's most important. So now that we have set up our settings, we can go ahead and create a preset for it. So next time that we need to create a sequence, we can just click on a preset and have it ready. Just like with your project, it's also important to stay descriptive with your names when it comes to presets. That way you know which one you're choosing before you actually look at the settings. So this one is a 1920 by 1080 at 30 fps. I'll go ahead and click OK. 
And now if we go back to the sequence presets tab, under the custom bin, you'll find the preset we just made. I'm gonna go ahead and select that preset and press OK. And there you have it. Your sequence is ready and already open in your timeline panel. If you found this video helpful, leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel and learn the ins and outs of Premiere Pro. Happy editing and keep it weird.